Now let's move on to a familiar passage, which is Psalm 51. We were just there two weeks ago. Reverend Rollins tried to preach the roof off and said, Lord, make me better. Yeah. Huh? Lord, make me better. How many want God to make them better? Yeah. Huh? Well, before God just come in and magically make you better, there's something that has to happen. Uh -huh. There's a purging that must take place. There's a cleansing. Are uh, y'all quiet in here? Y'all know we, we're talking about testifying of what we've seen in 2013. Yes. And on December 29, December 30th, one of them days up in there, God began to deal with me with Psalm 51. Mm. Before I heard preacher Rollins try to tell the roof off, talking about, Lord, make me better. Yes, he did. And you all are familiar with Psalm 51. Let's read it. I'm, I'm, I, if y'all don't mind, I just want to share the whole chapter with you because we don't want to just take and pinch off. Of it. The whole thing is loaded. The, the, the verse 1 says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto thy multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. You know, iniquity is that hidden sin. That, that stuff don't nobody know about but you and God. That's huh? right. And cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Huh? Against thee, the only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desired truth in the inward parts, <laughs> and in the hidden parts, and thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. That's the word I want to deal with. I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Ten verse said, Create in me a clean heart. There go that word again. Create in me what kind of heart? Clean heart. Okay, you're trying to make sure you're still with me. Oh God, and renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I was given. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with sacrifice of righteousness and burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall the off they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Amen. Amen. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Huh? Around about that 10th and 11th verse, told you is where I want to work because it says, Create in me a clean heart. How many times is that our prayer? <laughs> Create in me a clean heart. God, I need a new car. Create in me a clean heart. God, I want more money. Create in me a clean heart. Now, you all are familiar with the story, and I told you we're going to tie this in with Revelation because blessed is the reader that reads this prophecy. And not only is blessed is the reader, but I know that works. <laughs> David was a king, y'all. He, he wasn't just no foot soldier. He wasn't just some uh, paddler. He was the king. He was anointed at an early age when Saul messed up. Saul tried to put on the priest's clothes and wear a, a title that wasn't his. He tried to walk in an anointing that wasn't his. Do you know anybody like that? Huh? He tried to do something he wasn't ordained to do. And you have to be so careful not to get caught up in self that you
and women made outside. And during this period, during this time, men weren't allowed to go out. So, so I told you, David didn't just backslide, but he had a slow leak, huh? His flesh was weak. He, he had a whole lot on him. They had, had enemies after enemies. And it, it's something about when you get weak, when you get burned out, when you get stressed out with people, with church people, with issues, with the cares of life. That's when the enemy is fighting the hardest because he's trying to get you out of your weakness. Y'all quiet in here. So, so David messes up by looking at this woman. And more than looking, he desires her now. He wants this woman because, probably because she's unlimited, because she's not his, probably because he ain't got no business with her, made his desire increase more to say, get this woman over here. So he gets the woman to his house, and he sleeps with this married woman. Y'all quiet in here. But the Bible says, I know that works. <laughs> I know that works. Whether they be good or bad, I the Father, I the Great I Am, I Alpha and Omega, I the Beginning, I, I know that works. So, so David sleeps with this woman and tries to send her back home, and the woman gets pregnant. Huh? And see, sin, my mama say, sin will mess you up. Because, see, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And what sin will do is sin will leave a little residue behind you. <laughs> so, so when you used to shout the way you do, something happened where you trip up and you ain't never tripped while you're trying to praise God. And you halfway hurt yourself playing. Yes, I know that works, y'all. I know that works. Don't think you get away because you didn't left 42 or what. I know that works. I'm trying to share y'all what God shared with me. Yeah. Then he said, David, here, go, go a little farther. Say, okay, we got, we got a little problem. But she, we got a little problem. We're going to work it out. This is what I'm going to do. The baby here now, he didn't have the woman's husband killed. So we put him on the front line in the army. You're right, this killed dead. Right. And so the story goes on, the Bible says, this woman in gave birth now. And the, the baby is sick. Huh? <laughs> the baby is sick, so David begins to fall down and pray. In fact, David fasted for seven days. Mm -hmm. Huh? But, but something happened where he got a, 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 a solution, a resolution that it's over. It, it ain't no need to fast no more. It ain't no need to pray no more because the baby died. Y'all quiet in here. Yeah. Now look at sin because a whole lot of times we talk about David, we talk about Bathsheba, we talk about this illegitimate child. But look at sin. Sin broke up this married couple. Sin took this man's life. Huh? Sin had this unclean baby come in the world and die. And still yet, David doesn't have a heart. David doesn't have a mind of repentance. I know that works. Praise God for David. I know that works. Huh? So, so David, still the king. He's still running it. He's still calling shots. But, but yet God is not pleased. Because once I put my anointing on your life, once I deposit seeds into your life, you're held responsible why you in this body. Right, Not right. in this church building, but in this body. Huh? Not in Sunday school, but in this body. Right, right. Huh? Because we do understand now that he wants us to present ourselves. In 2013, he's not looking for a calf. He's not looking for uh ox. He's not looking for no animals. He's looking for us to present ourselves. Amen. So David has no mind to repent. He has no mind to ask God's forgiveness. Like most people with egos and think more of themselves than they ought to, he tries to cover it up. Uh, y'all, I'm trying to help somebody. See, because if you study the 51st Psalms, David had to do something. Yes, he did. What David does in the 51st Psalms is I acknowledge my sin. When the baby died, I didn't acknowledge it, God. When I had that woman who had been killed, I didn't acknowledge it. But because you know my works. <laughs> and the Bible says he got his son, the prophet Nathan. Say, go to your dad. <laughs> a 
enough is enough because the same Bible that got all this good information, all this good knowledge said, his spirit won't strive with man's always. So don't think that God is so great, so merciful, and so just that he won't spank you. Amen. Don't, don't think God is so loving, so kind, and so just that he will not cut you off and have nothing to do with you and say, I never knew you. Uh -huh. Y'all quiet in here. Amen. So David tries to cover up his mess. He keep on living life by cares. Ain't nothing happening. Ain't nobody sent to replace me like Saul. It must be okay. But God sends his messenger. <laughs> he sends his prophet. That's the book side. Elder David, I'm sure, fights with a whole bunch of spirits and a whole bunch of mess Ooh. in general because people don't understand how the essence or the importance of prophecy, you whether it's a prophet or a prophetess, they don't understand how it plays a role Ooh, in God. service. <laughs> on, not not in airplanes flying from city to city raising mega offerings and selling oil, but I'm talking about a true prophet. They don't always have an encouraging word. That sometimes tell you get right or get gone. Get your life right or God is going to wipe you off the face of the earth. That's prophets. That, in biblical times, the people ran from prophets. Mm -hmm. yes. In biblical times, the people didn't listen to prophets. In biblical times, they went and got soothsayers. They went and got astrologers. And they took their word rather than God. But God said, I know that word. Right on the wall was. Yeah, so God sends Nathan, and Nathan tells David. This story says there was a man that had a whole lot. He had everything. And here comes another man and takes away this man's one lamb. This was all he had. David gets vexed. He gets upset in his spirit. He said, Let's give this man the worst punishment means, which is death. Mm -hmm. And Nathan responds, Thou art the man. <laughs> wow. Huh? Hey. David, you're the man. Somewhere along the line, you fell out of love with your first love. Come on, talk about huh? It. Your first love wasn't Bathsheba. Your first love wasn't Michael, Saul, Saul's daughter. Your first love was me, David. Huh? Do you not remember being in the sheep, shepherd looking after the sheep, and the bear tried to take one of your sheep, uh -huh. and I with you beat the bear, beat the tiger, do yes. you not remember? Yes. Do you not remember how you was left in the back in the field when Solomon came, Samuel came to anoint my anointed one? Yes. And he, the oil wouldn't fall for none of your brothers, David, but, huh? but you. Yes, sir. Do, you, do, you, do you remember? Yes. Huh? Do, do you remember when Abimelech was ready to take you out of here, David? Amen. Do you remember? Well, amen. The stuff we go through is not by happenstance. It's not That's just true. because. But God does everything decent and in order. Huh? So just because stuff seems out of order in your life, it just may be God trying to get order in you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. So David now is on the same page with his son, his, the prophet. He sees his faults. He sees himself. And that's what I love about the word of God. Because the word of God is not some big old mystery. It's not a big old jigsaw puzzle. The word of God is simple. It's simple. Huh? But but the reason people don't dive into it is because you don't see Bishop in the Word. You see Antoine. You don't see Nisi. You don't see Robert. You don't see nobody but yourself. Yeah, that's right. Are y'all quiet? Amen. And that's why the enemy gets you distracted and begins to fight right. when you get in the Word of God. He don't want you to see yourself. That's it. See, because myself, I think I look okay. Yeah, I'm a little short, but I don't want to live with it. Yeah. But, but my mama said, God, show me myself as you see me. Huh, that was my mama's prayer. I, I'm not interested in what I look like. Huh, but show me how you see me. Mm -hmm. Are y'all quiet here? Mm -hmm. Revelation said, I know thy works. Mm -hmm. huh? He began to share with David. David, I know thy works. Amen. And David says in the 10th verse, creating me a clean heart. <laughs> oh God, and renew the right spirit within me. See, David had a deceptive spirit. Uh -huh. David thought he could deceive God. He thought he could sleep with this woman and keep running the kingdom. And he wasn't running any kingdom. Let me remind you, this was God-chosen people. Oh, y'all quiet. Somebody just missed something. You be careful how you treat, how you handle God. That's it. That's it. Oh, y'all quiet. This same David had the opportunity 
stood over Saul while he was chasing him like an animal. Sure did. Saul and his soldiers went to sleep yeah. in the cave. Sure did. David had a knife over him ready to take his life. God tapped David on the shoulder and said, touch not my anointing. He was trying to kill me, God. Touch not my anointing. He lost your anointing. God, touch not my anointing. You can't argue with God. You can't get people back out. But when maturity sets in, when you grow up a little bit, it's not all about me anyway. That's right. Huh? See, a whole lot of people use that scripture so freely and don't even understand the context of it. This was a man who lost God's spirit, but yet was God's anointing. This is a man who deserved to die trying to kill this young boy, but he was God's anointing. Y'all quiet here. The reason you still sitting in the seat because you're God's anointing. The reason enemy hasn't took your life is because you're God's anointing. I know everybody in here can sit and reflect on times you ain't felt good in your body. Times you felt like you was about to take a trip on out of here. It was nothing but God's covering. Created me a clean heart. Oh God, and renew the right spirit in me. I don't want the wrong spirit. <laughs> oh, it's a whole lot of spirits. When you begin studying the word of God, you will read a whole lot of times unclean spirits, unfamiliar spirits. Huh? There's a whole bunch of spirits that come in church because everybody's mind is not on the word of God. Everybody's mind is not coming to receive something from God. Everybody's mind is not in tune with the word of God. Huh? Some people say, it's revival. I'm going to church. I ain't got nothing to do tonight. Are y'all quiet in here? I can't go uh, Thursday and Friday. I got plans, but Wednesday is open. I'm going to go to church. I guess I'll hey, go. Yeah. And you feel like you God owes you something. Are y'all quiet in here? But he says, create in me a clean heart with God. Renew the right spirit in me. Cast me not away from thy presence. 